Jesus died so we might live. Amen. Text will serve as base of our messages from Matthew chapter 22, verses 15 to 22. Dear friends in Christ, let me paint a picture for you this morning and see where you fit. It's a family dinner. You're with extended family. There's one person in the group who starts talking politics or social issues or whatever. This does not surprise you because it has been happening for years. How do you react? Do you engage in the debate? Do you change the subject to weather or something safe? Or do you run as fast as you can into the kitchen to help with the gravy? Who are you? And where do you fit? I think I know almost all of you here this morning. And I would say in the congregation this morning, we have all three. Those of you who like to change the subject or skedaddle to some other part of the house, I'm with you most of the time. Experience has taught me that. At times, I like to engage the debate. But think about it this way. Do you ever leave that family dinner thinking you ever really changed someone's mind? Many times it just causes tension and the joy of another family gathering goes right down the toilet. Jesus got dragged into many debates. The text says, you do not care about anyone's opinion, for you are not swayed by appearances. You know, that should be part of the constitution of all of us. But the problem is, he's God, we are not. Oh, how we love the magic words to put someone in their place. He's Jesus, Son of God and Savior. You, me, sinful human being. We're on two different playing fields. What can be done? Come along with me as we step into the great debate. Now, do you ever remember a great debate when an opponent was silenced? They rarely have it. Here's one that worked. While receiving some tough questions from the press during Desert Storm, General Norman Schwarzkopf found himself debating with a reporter as to why we didn't look to the French for more support. While growing tired of the questions, his quick wit offered this, going to war without the French is like going deer hunting without your accordion. Insulted but not converted, the reporter didn't ask the general any more questions. Now our great debate, debate today is Jesus versus the Pharisees slash Herodians. Now these two groups were not usually on the same side. So they asked the debate question and here it is. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Now you need to remember the Herodians are puppets of the Romans. They believed that the taxes should be paid to Caesar or that person was a traitor. The Jews believe paying no taxes to Caesar or they believe paying taxes to Caesar was against God's will and they shouldn't have to do it. So we see the trap set up, don't we? If he speaks against the Pharisees, he'll show he's a traitor to his own people, the Jews. If he agrees with the Pharisees, the Herodians will have cause for his arrest. They could then lawfully kill him. In this way, the Herodians could carry out the dirty work of the Pharisees. They have to be thinking, we've got it. In a simple way, we see ourselves. Can't we manipulate others to get what we want? Spouses do it. Kids and parents do it. Workers and employers do it. Neighbors do it. Oh, we like to play the game. Herodian or Pharisee? Take your pick. We've been there. In this great debate, 
Jesus has an answer. He doesn't withhold the truth or avoid the question. You and I might be looking for a quick exit, not the Savior. He proclaims both law and gospel in his answer. Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. Now since Caesar is the coin on which they are basing this, you, they are obeying the fourth commandment by honoring the ruling authorities by paying taxes. That's being faithful to God because he's the one that puts government in place. Doing our duty as citizens, we are giving thanks to our loving and generous God for his gift of civil governance and peace. But that's not the end. We are to understand the gift to God, what is God's, is to see the Holy Spirit at work in the gospel. It's to believe that same gospel and to recognize that faith in Christ is the highest worship of Christ, the ultimate rendering to God. We receive the bounty of His grace in the Lord's Supper and in holy baptism and in holy absolution. It is to cling to Jesus as the one who paid the tax debt by his suffering and death on the cross for us. The tax bill has been paid in full. The bill collector of the grave was unable to hold Jesus. The effects of debt, death, and hell had no power over him. He rose from the dead to prove the debt is truly and completely paid. Jesus won the great debate as only he could do. What does that mean for you and I? Don't go off running from the great debates of our society. Recently, the Supreme Court took a pass on marriage. This is our great debate because society is on the precipice of falling. Have we learned nothing sociologically from the breakdown of the family these last 40 to 50 years? If we add another layer away from God's design, what can we expect? But this is a tough one. Because it is government that gives me and other clergy the right to marry men and women. It is not official until I sign a piece of paper and send it to the county clerk. So does God just want us to throw up our hands and give up because people are making these laws? No, of course not. He wants us to engage in the great debate. And how do we know that? Because in his word, our only source of right and wrong, he only blesses one avenue for his creation. Male and female, be fruitful and multiply. Science teaches the parts only work one way. The creator saw this, he called it good. When people want to be God, they do nothing but mess things up. A gentle reminder. I'm not God, you're not God, the Supreme Court is not God, the pontificators of our time are not God, there's only one true God and He is in control. In the greatest debate ever waged, Satan against Jesus, Jesus has won. Don't run to the kitchen to make the gravy, but share God's word and keep it at that. The Holy Spirit has to do the rest. I know many of you get frustrated and I share your anguish. I know what it's like, but lean on the great debater, the one who loves you so much he doesn't want to see you perish. The one who cares for you so much that he has promised to never leave you or forsake you. That's what I take away from the great debate. I pray you do too. Amen.